Well, good morning this morning, and welcome here at 11 o'clock, Titan Star Church, and we're going to begin with doing some worship, and so let's, let's do some singing. Okay, let's sing Here We Are Once Again. touch our hearts as only you can do, that your Holy Spirit will come this morning, and that you will light on each and every one of us and create a desire in each and every one of us, Lord, to do your will, that we would just be open to your leading and open to your direction in our lives, whether it's individually or corporately, Lord, we just look to you for guidance and direction. And so, Lord, this day, as we come into your house, as people may be listening or watching online, Lord, have your way in each one of us. We just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. And let's sing the song, The Soul Set Free.
14 through 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through the Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. We have a story to tell the nation. Is we need to spend more time in prayer. 
And let's see. Uh, oh gosh, we're gonna have to have birthdays and anniversaries today, but that'll happen in just a couple of minutes. And then next Sunday is Mission Pot Sunday at Potluck. And then our board meeting will be on Tuesday the 13th. Tuesday? Uh, yeah, Jean's uh, uh, changed? cardiac got changed because they're completely full on Tuesdays. So, so okay. we're going to go on Wednesdays and Fridays for the rest of the time. So we could have actually have board meeting on the proper day. So we're going to plan on that at 2, two o'clock on Tuesday. And then Father at June 18th, it's Father's Day. And if you're a father and you want to come, or a guy, because we don't care, we're not going to discriminate. If you're a guy, come on Father's Day and we'll get you a little gift. And then June 25th is Communion. And uh, while we're focusing on prayer, uh, we're going to be starting a little Bible study tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, with a lady, in place of the ladies' Bible study, we're going to actually be doing a study on the Lord's Prayer. And so if anybody's interested, come, come and join us. It's got a little video session and then a, a time of talking about the, the different. And I think we're going to focus on the Father tomorrow. And uh, that's going to go on for, I think, it's about five or six weeks, something like that. And uh, so if you're at all interested, show up tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And we're going to do that. And uh, let's see, what else? Anything else we got really on there? Uh, well, no, I guess we'll take our morning offering, John, and, uh, and then we'll uh, do birthdays and anniversaries. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for your love today. Thank you for just allowing us to be a part of your family and here in the church. And we just, we're just going to give you all the praise and glory, just that you love us so much that you just draw us in. And so, Father, uh, please accept our offerings that we're going to give today. Use it to build your kingdom. And, Father, uh, bring more people into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And we, we give you all the praise and glory today in Jesus' name. Amen.
11. Oh, I can't even remember that. <laughs> yeah. But Roman, right? Yeah. He's going to put his money in first. He's, you didn't have to change. Remember, there's uh, refreshments over here, so feel free to grab yourself some refreshments. Some, I think there's juice, coffee, and water, and there's a bunch of different kinds of cookies. So just help yourself with that. Give some more hugs. <laughs> I don't care. And might as well finish doing some singing. Singing. I will sing the wondrous story.
today is, uh, is part two of the blessings of prayer in our local church. And you know, I got, a, I got an email from our district superintendent. It was one of those emails when you just kind of, kind of, you go down, it's kind of like a downer. It was like, he was telling how statistics show that young people are falling, not necessarily falling away from the church, but they're not coming to the church. Uh, on a general basis across the United States, that that's kind of the case. Uh, and it was kind of a bummer other than the fact that we know that we worship a big God and he can do whatever he wants to do. And one of the things we really need to do is be connected with him and we do that through prayer. I mean, we do that through church, we do that through, uh, through Bible study, but we really do that mostly uh, through prayer. And so, uh, this is the second part of our series, and uh, as D. Duke said, and I'm going to do it, if you don't want to pray, oh, Marlene, I don't have a clicker. Oh, there we go. I don't see it on the, on the screen, though. Anyway, if you don't want to pray, uh, if you don't want to have prayer, uh, you won't have any blessings. So if you don't want God to bless you, thank you. Uh, then you don't have to worry about praying. And if you want God to bless you just a little bit, pray a little bit. I think that's kind of where the church generally is from most everything I've talked, to, talked and listened is, is everybody feels kind of an obligation to pray. Uh, but prayer should be a communication, just like you communicate with your family members and your, your spouse or your children or your friends. Uh, but what we're here today is about, we really would like to have a lot of God blessings. And if you want to have God blessing your life a lot, then you need to really get into communication with him and, and come in some prayer. Uh, you know, Acts 4.32 says, all the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. I like that first part. All the believers were one heart and mind. Are we with one heart and mind in our church? That's what we're supposed to be. Uh, and uh, this should tell you a little something. Let me begin by saying right now, I believe most Christians want to pray. They are convicted by their prayerlessness, and they pray for a while, but they should stop. They can't maintain a life of prayer. And the reason for that is because they really don't understand the purpose of prayer. They don't understand the real purpose of prayer. And until you understand the purpose of prayer, I think most of us are praying in vain. You know, have to comprehend why God wants us to pray. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. They wouldn't have said that unless they wanted to learn. And I mean, most sitting here, listening to this morning, want to learn how to pray. You would pray if you knew its purpose. You would pray if there was some knowledge that God had given to you about the eternal purpose of prayer. Now, how many Christians I know pray only out of a sense of obligation? They, they say, well, I'm supposed to pray. The Bible says I'm supposed to pray. The pastor keeps putting pressure on us to pray. Others around us are supposed to pray. Oh, pray. I have to pray. That's the Christian thing to do. Folks, what kind of a marriage would it be if the wife concerning intimacy thought it was only her duty? You will never understand the importance of prayer until you understand one foundational truth. And all prayer would even build upon this truth. It is not just for the good of man. It's not just for my good that God wants me to pray. It's not just for my welfare. Not for me to get relief. Not for me simply to get something out of God to try to extract something from God. The true meaning of prayer is for the delight of the Lord as well as for my relief. Unless those two go together, you don't have a foundation upon which to build a prayer life. It is not just for my good, it is for the delight of my Lord. I'm not going to just go to God and intercede. I'm not just going to ask Him for things for me, but I'm going to seek His need as well as understand my need. Now, Christians are very self-centered when it comes to prayer. 
prayer because we go to Him only to burden our troubles and sorrows and get a supply of strength to go on to the next battle. And that's good, it's critical, and it works. And so we're invited to come boldly to the throne of grace uh, in all of our times of need. But prayer is not complete. Now listen to me closely. Prayer is not complete. It is not a prayer that's most pleasing to the Lord if we do not understand God's need. You don't go to prayer just to meet your own need. God has a need. That is why he, he does hardly anything. There's nothing you can to accomplish in life but through prayer. And why is it that God has tied himself to this process of prayer? We seek relief. And God seeks fellowship. The Lord seeks intimacy with us. Now folks, you have to understand that when you go into the presence of the Lord. That the Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is looking for fellowship. Actually, the primary purpose of prayer ought to be fellowship with the Lord and the one who prays. Because most of the things that we're praying about, God's already promised to do. We are praying about things that God said we're not to pray about. He said we're not even getting thought about it. How much of our prayer time has been asking God a better job and a better apartment, clothes and food and all of these things when Jesus said, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat and what you drink, nor yet for your body what you should put on. Your heavenly Father feeds the fowls of the air, they neither sow nor reap. Are you not more valuable than they? Your heavenly Father knows you have need of these things, but seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. Take no thought for the morrow. For your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. And what I hear from that, the Lord saying, you come to me and focus on my righteousness or fellowship. Focus on just getting to know me, on intimacy, on just loving me. And I'll take care of all your needs. Don't put your focus on material things. Don't put focus even on your healing of your body. All of these things I know before you ask. He knows what we need. And he said, you take the kind of petition out of our prayer life that many of us pray and there'd be nothing left. There'd be no prayer left because it is all asking, it's all petition. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the Lord said, if you want to really pray, please him to me. Come and focus on mighty. Come and focus on fellowship with me. Come and focus on intimacy. I'll take care of everything else in your life. And I've proven that and I believe it with all my heart. have a tendency to want to just run our list of wants before God instead of spending time with Him. If you remember the little video we showed a while back of Molly Bruno, the prayer warrior, and what did she do? She started every morning looking out the window and talking to her Lord because that's really what it's about. You know, so many times I hear people say, well, I don't know how to pray. I don't want to pray out loud. It, it, I just don't know what to do. If we're married, if we have children, how do we communicate? We open up our mouths and we talk. And that's what God wants us to do. Open our mouths, our minds to him and talk to him. Let him know how much he really means to us. Give him a chance to communicate that as well. You know, if we really seek his face and we do it like he wants to do it, he'll take care of the needs in our life. Instead of just running up a petition of wants that we have, whether it's for our physical bodies or whatever it is, spend time with him. He wants to have that intimacy with each of us. And, and that's really an important thing. So as we continue on, uh, number, number six is the more praying that is done by the church, the more the people will grow spiritually. Now, I think that applies corporately as well as individually. The more that we pray as a church, the more you're going to grow. And you're going to grow in that relationship with the Lord. You know, I, I, I think the when, when Dr. 
uh, talked about young people not coming to church is because they're not invited. You know, they're not exposing themselves to the word of the Lord. And so consequently, the world pulls a lot harder than what we're pulling and what the Lord is, is doing in their lives because they're not being exposed. And so we need to have more praying, uh, not only for the people in the church, but for people outside the church. Acts 4.31 says, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. That's because they spent time in prayer with the Lord, in communion with the Lord, and the Holy Spirit came and, and made his presence known to there in the, in the church and in the body of Christ. You see, people grow and they grow best in an environment of unity and love. When we have real unity and love within the church and we're praying, uh, that's when people grow the best. Ephesians uh, 4, 3, 14 and through 16 gives us these words. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. That's what we, we ought to be praying for ourselves and for all of our people. That the Lord's spirit would come into us and fill us to our inner being because that's when we're going to become powerful. That's when the Lord is going to be able to work through us. Now number seven. The more praying that is done by the church the more boldness, the more courage, the more passion the people will have to reach their lost friends. The more that we pray, the more you're going to be bold and you're going to want to really reach those friends, those neighbors, and those relatives for Jesus Christ. Because how are they going to find it if we don't reach them? Ephesians 4.16 You know, that way, when somebody comes into our church, if we're all sitting here bickering amongst one another, if we're all sitting here not being loving and cooperating and, and friendly, they're not going to want to come back to church. And that's why we really have to have the unity and love that, that the Bible calls us to do. Ephesians 6, 19. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. That is for your pastor, that is for your teachers. Pray that when we open our mouths, when, the, when those, uh, those cults come to the door and they come knocking with their message, pray that we would be able to have the message to give back to them. Because people are attracted to the unity and the love that only Jesus can give. Now, number eight. Uh, the more praying that is done in the church, the more desire there will be in the hearts of people of the church to do the work of the ministry. The more praying we do, the more you're going to be willing to actually open up and do the work of the ministry. Remember, Ephesians 4, 16 gives us those words. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament. That's us, people. We're the supporting ligaments. And when we grow and build itself up in love, as each person does its work. You know, it can't just be one or two people doing all of the work. It's got to be the, the whole church coming together. That's what happens when we have unity in the body. You see, uh, people that will be responsible to leadership uh, in united and loving churches. 
uh, responsive to the calls of the leadership to, to do the things. Uh, if we're not in love, not in unity, uh, when the pastor says, I need help doing this, everybody goes, well, I, maybe somebody else will actually pick up the two. But if we're really united in love, then we want to do our part. We want to be able to be involved. I mean, Jesus said in, in Matthew 9, he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. That was the case then, it is the, still the case now. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Send out workers into his harvest field. You know, prayer is so important. Let's look at another little bit. Every great move of God in history was preceded by the prayers of his people. His presence would often fall on these gatherings of prayer and would become evident to everyone around them that God was doing something that could not be explained. Those are the types of times we need to begin. I mean, we keep saying, well, we'd love to be like the Book of Acts and see people say the missional efforts and lives change and people coming to Christ by the thousands. What do they do in Acts? They pray. There's a big difference between a church that prays and a praying church. I think all churches by nature they have an invocation, they have an offertory prayer, a lot of them have a benediction. But prayer is not an integral part of who they are and what they do. But a praying church soaks everything that they do in prayer. What would it look like in your church? If instead of prayer being just an add-on to activities you already have planned, the prayer became the focal point, the centerpiece of everything else that you did. What would happen to your schedule? What would happen to your budget? What would happen to the focus of your people? And we've got classes teaching people how to study the Bible, how to disciple, how to raise their kids, how to do a thousand things. But we don't teach people the necessity and the importance of prayer. The thing about prayer is it really doesn't sell itself. I think of all the spiritual disciplines, prayer is oftentimes the most neglected because it's something you have to work at. Nothing of lasting value happens without prayer. We're building the kingdom. We have to have prayer in this corner. So to, as you hear these ideas, we want to challenge you to devote yourselves to prayer. Ask God to raise up in your leadership a heart, a passion for intercession. It can start with you. You know, it can start with one person with a desire. And when there is a personal desperation for God, that becomes infectious. And I believe that as we get in unity in the church, in prayer, then we open the door for the Holy Spirit to come and do what we cannot do. There are some things that are not going to happen apart from prayer. It's not that God can't. It's that God has sovereignly chosen to say, if you don't pray, I'm not going to do it. What do you want said about you as a person? What do you want said about you as a church? I hope that they can say about me and my church that we believe in prayer. So if you're in a church and you're saying, you know what, all this sounds great and, and I think we pray enough, I want to challenge you and say, God wants to take you even further than that. He wants to, He has a desire to call us closer intimately, uh, individual, and through that, He can use the people collectively. Now these examples aren't the only way to do it. We encourage you and your church to pray and to think creatively. How can your church be more devoted to prayer? And as you do, that God would come down and do something incredible in your midst to be that city on a hill, the salt and light he calls us to be, that prayer would be the priority. And that's what my desire is, is to get prayer to be a priority in our church. You know, we, we have a Bible study starting tomorrow about prayer. I would encourage people, I know not everybody can be there, but everybody can have access to the information. I've got the videos, I've got the video clips, I've got the material, and, and if you're at all interested, please let me know, and I'll provide that stuff to you so you can share it on your own. Uh, but we need to start having more prayer in our church 
we need to have more prayer in our personal lives. And if we really do that, I believe that God is going to work in and through our church. You see, uh, people who are responsive to change in churches where there is good unity and love and when we get together in prayer. Uh, number nine says, the more praying that is done by the church, the less influence that Satan is going to have on our people, in our church, and on those being prayed for outside of the church. The more that we are praying, the less influence that Satan is going to have. Because he is real, and he is out there, and he doesn't want anybody coming to church. Uh, I, you know, I remember years and years and years ago, when Gene and I were first coming to this church. I wasn't the pastor, I just started coming. And I've heard this same story from other people. Invariably, on the way to church, we'd get in some kind of argument. And it's like, take me home, Carl. I don't want to go to church. I said, well, we're already halfway there. You know, I remember another couple within the church. They come to church in two separate vehicles because they knew that Satan was trying to get them not to come to church. He doesn't want to see us falling in love with the Lord. He doesn't want to see us getting really involved in the church. And he will do whatever is necessary to try to stop that. Luckily, we don't have that problem anymore, do we? Uh, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 11.3 gives us these words. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. I mean, if you don't think that's true, talk to people outside the church about God. Talk to them about Jesus Christ and you'll see that the vast majority uh, that are out there uh, really aren't buying what I'm what we're selling and it's it's a free gift we're not selling anything Jesus says in John 17 my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one Jesus knew that the evil one was going to be uh, hitting his disciples and, and touching us and trying to get us to where we don't believe in what we believe. Ephesians 6, 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I mean... All you have to do is turn on the news, turn on the TV, and see how much violence there is, how much evil there is in our world. I mean, people are getting shot almost all the time. People are having mass shootings, stabbings, murders. I mean, just yesterday, six women, six women from the Portland metropolis area that whole area around the Portland area. Six women have been found murdered in the last couple months. And they don't have a clue if there's a, a string, if there's a, if there's a, if somebody that's going around killing them or if it's insulate or isolated instances, they just don't know. But this is in Oregon. This is in Portland. Uh, just yesterday, uh, yesterday afternoon in Corbett you know how many of us drive back and forth to Portland and go by the, the exit of Corbett there was a domestic violence where somebody was shot and killed another person in domestic violence 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon 
That's only just a few miles from Red River. Uh, the evil one is really working, and he's working over time. Ephesians uh, 6.18 And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. When you, when you talk with the Lord, you lift up those that are important to you. You lift up your church. You lift up people. It's just a matter of conversation. And when you don't know what words, the Holy Spirit will utter those words for you and, and communicate to God. Luke 22, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. That's what we can do as we continue to pray and as we get better in prayer, we can strengthen each other in our relationships with the Lord. Now, number 10, the more praying that is done by a church, the more opportunities, the more opportunities there will be to serve the Lord and to be used by him to advance the kingdom of God. Again, we're talking about it, doing the work of the Lord and, and not just coming to church, but actually being involved. You see, the opportunities will come because God is opening doors. God will open those doors if we just seek his face. And because of an increase of vision in the life of the pastor and lay people, as we increase our vision by the Lord's direction to us, uh, the Lord will provide the answers and direction for this church. Uh, Colossians 4 uh, gives us these words. Devote yourselves to prayer. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Now Paul was praying that long time ago. But that prayer is just as important for us today as it was for Paul then. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, says these words. Because a great door of effective work has been opened to me. As we pray more, as we seek the Lord's face, as we seek that intimacy with him in, his, in our prayer time and communicating with him, he will open those doors. He'll make it known as to what we're supposed to be doing. You see, it's much easier to get people excited about serving in ministry when there are unity and love the love of Jesus within our hearts. And, and we need to stir that up. We need to, to get out the egg beater and kind of get our, our psyches all beat up and stuff so that, so that we're excited, mixed up. Acts 14 tells us, on arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had been done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. If he can do it then, he can do that now with us. Doesn't matter how young, doesn't matter how old we are, we can still be effective tools for Jesus. Second Corinthians uh, 2. Now when I went to Troas uh, to preach the gospel of Christ, and found that the Lord had opened the door for me. That door gets opened by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. But, but like Wilkerson said, we need to have that intimacy. We need to have that relationship with him. We need to be seeking his face, not just putting a, a request for everything in the world to, that we want, whether it's health or, or riches or whatever it is. We need to be having intimacy with our Lord and when we do things will take place Revelation chapter 3 
to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. Just a couple more things. Number 11, the more praying that is done by the church, the stronger the marriages and the families in the church will become. I mean, you know, if there's any kind of weaknesses in your marriages or in your families, uh, start praying more. The more praying is done by the church, those family ties will be strengthened, I guarantee it. It's happened in my life. Ephesians 3, for this reason I kneel before the Father, for whom his whole body, heaven, family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being. Number 12, the more praying that is done by the church, the more money the people will give. It's not just about money. The more praying that is done, people will give more of themselves, of their time, and of their money. Because they will have a relationship with Jesus and they want to support his ministry, whether it's financial or whatever. Uh, Acts chapter 4 gives us these words. After they prayed, the place where their meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything that they had. And then the follow-up verses, there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money to, from the sales, and put the, it into the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as, as he needed. I'm not suggesting that we do that. I am suggesting that we, that we help one another out when we have needs, that we give to one another, that we support one another. And if we really did that, then the church would be that much stronger. You see, people are motivated to give more when the church is healthy. And so as we conclude this morning, a uh, couple things. One we shared last week. Uh, but, but listen, the prayer... The prayer that we're going to be using tomorrow, the Lord's Prayer. Read it with me, would you? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You see, the more praying that the local church does, the more God is glorified and the more he is present and he's here and he's been able to felt, be felt in those unified, those loving churches. And that's where I hope that we can be. And then secondly, the more praying the local church does, God blesses the church more with unified and loving hearts. The more we pray, the tender our hearts become. And we become tender towards everyone here as well as the people that don't really understand. 
And that's why I want us to pray for it. And so, would you stand with me and we'll close with a word of prayer. Father God, we just come before you this day. And Father, we just ask that you would just help us, help me, help the leadership of this church, help each and every one of us to submit and surrender ourselves to you. To come into communication with you. Father, you're not some person that's aloof, that's far off. You want that intimate communication between father and son, between father and daughter. Lord God, help us to put aside the things that keep us from having communication with you and help us to open ourselves up as much as we might watch TV, play on our computers, play our games, Father, we can give you more time surrendering ourselves to you, seeking your face, not only communicating to you, but, but listening for what you might say to our hearts and to our minds, leading us and guiding because, Father, I know that you are a big God. There is no other God. And I know that you will help us to find direction in our personal lives and in our church and in, in the ministry of the church if we just truly submit ourselves into your hands and allow you to speak in and to and through us. And so, Father, this day, Help us to surrender ourselves completely over to you. Opening our hearts and our minds up to your leading, seeking you on a personal basis in our lives. And Father, I know that if we really drew, truly do that as a church, you will guide us in the direction you want us to go. And so Father, I ask your blessing upon each person here, every young person, every old person, and everyone in between. Lord, help us to seek your face. Help us to, to seek your direction in our lives because you just want to be involved in our lives. You want to have that intimacy of father, son, father, daughter relationship. And, and so help us to do just that. Help us to just say, I want to know what you want. Help us to open ourselves up more often every day. We just give you all the praise and glory today. And we just ask your blessing on each person as we leave today. And we just thank you for your love, your unconditional love for each and every one of us. And we thank you in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And the people said, Amen. 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 Have a great and glorious day and, and we'll see you tomorrow morning for Bible study and we'll see you next week. God bless you.